Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lost in the Episode. Today we'll be doing a spoiler recap and review of the fourth episode of The Watch, titled Twilight Canyons. So, just to remind you all, we have not read the book series Discworld by Terry Pratchett. So we are going into this watching it as a standalone series. So we don't have the insights to compare it to the books. So before we give you our thoughts on episode four, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you liked it and comment down below and let us know what your thoughts on episode four of The Watch are. We love to have conversations here at Lost in the Real. All right, yesterday's episode of The Watch was about the watch, uh, accompanied by Lady Ramkin, finding clues to reach the sword Gawain to rid the town of the dragon. Meanwhile, Carcer and Wants are trying to do the same with a bit of a head start. Carrot is showing signs of having feel, feelings for Ingwa, and Vimes is wrestling with glimpses of a future he saw with Ramkin while connected to Carcer's mind in the previous episode. So I really thought that this episode did a really good job of progressing uh, the plot exponentially. I really kind of see now where they are going with this show and how it's going to progress. Um, I'm definitely interested to see now what uh, Carcer is going to do to retrieve that sword again uh, from Vimes. Uh, we kind of see at the end there he's talking to the... Um, the the leader of the the thief guild but now he's not anymore right because they they got rid of him in the last episode uh they didn't get rid of him but they i think they levied a bunch of taxes against the the assassins guild levied a heavy fine against them for uh reasons i can't recall um he's still the head of the thieves guild i'm pretty sure uh, unless i missed well, something okay um so so carcer is going to try to get the the thieves guild to basically steal the sword for him is that what yeah. you got from that yeah pretty much and i'm i'm assuming that carcer's probably going to betray him oh yeah because he Definitely. wants the sword for himself uh we did also get a little glimpse of what happened to carcer after he was killed mm -hmm. like killed by vimes when they were were young he went to this like other realm i guess where he's, you find out that he's doing the bidding of, I uh, guess, unfeeling gods that are trying to stop Vimes from from progressing the the watch. Yeah, I basically get the idea that these are like interdimensional like auditors who have now, you know, they wanted him to find the sword, Carcer, because they believe as beings who cannot feel they are worried that the watch is going to be the end of what they see and want the world to be yeah uh more accurately the others want carcer to burn everything down in the reality his means of finding it is to, to control the dragon with the book but he can't control the dragon with the book unless he has the sword and the mm -hmm. dragon will basically wipe everything out so what do you think will happen if he does wipe it out? Is he just going to kill everybody and then they want the world to start over again in this reality? Yeah, well, I mean, they haven't said specifically, but through what Carcer has said, yeah, they, they can't start building a, another reality where things can be better or whatever until the, you know, basically everything else is flattened. So what were some things that you liked and disliked about the episode? Um, This... I don't know. I thought it was kind of a, a slow episode. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the like quirkiness that I really have grown to like in the series was not present. Um, although I did really love, I do love that, that death keeps showing up and mm -hmm. kind of giving us exposition to people's uh, past. You know, first, the first two episodes, he was talking to Vimes. The third episode, he was talking to uh, Ramkin and this episode, he had a little, like, conversation with uh, Carrot, and it, it kind of gives you a glimpse into everybody's past. Um, yeah, I, and I liked that, you know, Carrot was actually giving him the respect that, like, he 
so clearly craves. And Absolutely. He like even blurted out, he's like, uh, you want to get a drink sometime? No, never mind, never mind. <laughs> and then he <laughs> runs away. Also, I love Matt Barry. Um, I love him from the IT crowd and and um, what we do in the shadows, which you, you should totally go see both of those. But he he's basically an everything British. Like he's he's like a cameo and everything. The only thing I'm waiting for now is a cameo from Richard Awadi, um, <laughs> just because they seem to be in a lot of cameos. Um, also, the uh, jitterbug scene was amazing. I just I don't know. They <laughs> they all start. There's this whole like dance number thing that by a, a magic spell, and they all dance to Jitterbug. And I think it was a good uh, light moment in this episode. I love the idea of that Jitterbug moment, um, and I, I actually wrote a whole thing about how I felt about it. But it put a smile on my face at first because I was like, what an interesting way to make people who are literally about to fight and like they want to kill each other. Then all of a sudden they have to dance with each other, you know, and talk face to face. And I thought that was so uh, just unique and such an interesting way to uh, progress the story. But I feel like it it could have been such a moment and it didn't hit like the mark for me as much like I wanted it to really for them to really just like relish in that scene and I I just maybe I just didn't get enough of it Hmm. well we definitely got some more well Vimes at least got some more clues to you know Carcer's past and what had happened to him and Mm -hmm. ultimately the reason it was stopped was because the people that are the commanding uh, Carcer didn't want him to divulge any more information. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is really interesting. I also, uh, with Lord Vinatari, I feel like this is the first time that we see that they are more nefarious than I originally thought. Did you get that? No, I because I... I always knew that she was bad and because her whole thing is, is like, okay, yeah, crime's gone down, but that's because we legalized a certain amount of crime. Well, of course it's going to go down. People are still dying on the streets. Just because you, you call it something else doesn't mean that it's not happening. So, I mean, I always knew she was bad and she's just trying to get power. She's trying to hold on to the power. The assassins are trying to take power from her. And then, you know, the watch is trying to, you know, was useless. And now they're, you know, even they're even fighting for themselves a little bit. But I do, like I had mentioned in the last episode, or the last, the the video we did about the first three episodes, I knew that Vimes was good inside, like deep down. And this episode proves it more because Carcer was like, you know, he's got a he's got a conscience and that's conscience and that's his biggest weakness and that's how we're yeah. gonna take the sword from him. Yeah, I see him fighting against Vimes eventually. Or uh Vinatari, sorry. I see I that's what I'm most excited about. I wrote down that I am most excited to see, you know, a confrontation, like a real actual confrontation between Vimes and Carcer. And then I'm interested to see what happens after that confrontation and if that leads to a confrontation with Vinatari. One big qualm I had with this episode is I could really tell the budgetary constraints on this episode. And I, you know, had brought up how polished the show felt in the first three episodes, but I am revoking that polished card because the makeup and prosthetics did not look good in this episode to me. What what do you think? I uh, didn't notice it, but I don't typically notice uh, that that type of thing. I, I never noticed that stuff when I watched the first three episodes. But in this one, I I don't know. I could just I was like, oh, like they did not have money to make this look good. <laughs> I, well, I thought this, the stitched up guy looked really good, especially his eye with multiple pupils on it. I don't know. I I, I just hope that if they do uh, renew this show for a second season, hopefully they'll have a little bit of a bigger budget because there is so much more that they could do with this show. I just hope they're able to uh, make it look better. <laughs> so let's let's talk about the budding relationship between uh, Angua and, and Carrot. Uh, what do you what do you think about that? I want to be in on it 
but I'm not because I think that Carrot, the way he's probably the least interesting character so far for me, he's really dull and doesn't have a lot to him. And Aang was such a badass that I'm just not, I, I'm not sold on this idea of these two getting together. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm in love with Angua, so Carrot's not good enough for her. Um, (laughs) But no, Angua is like kind of a a troubled character. She's a little fairy girl, but she's not as in she's a fairy, but she's just a little girl. Um, And she's like a big bad werewolf and she kicks a whole bunch of ass. And I mean, Carrot's Carrot's a paladin. He's a he's a, a lawful good character and lawful good characters are boring. I don't care if you play about Paladin with your D&D crew and you got some crazy quirk with him. He's boring. That's just how it is. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure to tune in next Monday for our Episode 5 Recap and Review. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.